our next guest was put face to face with those issues when a sharp pain in her stomach ended up being the tip of the iceberg for her health problems. Before we talk to her, take a look at her story. I went from being very healthy to not basically overnight. Jenna Reish was always active. She was a competitive runner, a nurse, and was in the process of getting her master's degree when her life was suddenly turned upside down. I got this pain in the right upper side of my stomach and then my life was never the same again. She went to the ER right away, but no one could find anything wrong. I had, you know, a plethora of tests based on where my pain was, but everything checked out as, as normal. Months went by without any doctors believing how bad her condition was, and her pain was getting worse. I was needing ibuprofen to get through my days. After seeing nine different doctors across four specialties, Jenna finally got an answer. She was like, huh, like it sounds like you might have endometriosis. But even with an answer, her health kept declining. I was getting sicker and sicker. My symptoms are getting more intense and they're lasting a lot longer. Then, when she went in for surgery, her doctor was still hesitant to believe anything was really wrong. He said, almost like warning me, like, it, we might confirm that this might just be in your head. And that's what it felt like to me, like, we'll look, but just letting you know, don't be surprised if we don't find anything, as if, like, this has happened to him many times before. Turns out, it wasn't in her head. She was diagnosed with endometriosis. So it was a really kind of a confusing time because I felt validated that I had it, but then also like, all right, well now, now what do I do? But her hard times dealing with health care were far from being over. Wow, please welcome to the show, Jenna Reach. Thank Jenna. you. Jenna. Hi, Jenna. Hi, thanks for having me. We're so glad to have you. Thank you for speaking out. You had to see so many different doctors. People are already writing in nine doctors to get an answer for all the pain you were having. In your mind, why do you think it just took that many doctors? Oh, you know, I still think about this. Yeah. Um, to this day, it's been years since this happened to me. And I think that there are a number of reasons. I think one, I think that I'm a woman. <laughs> um, I hate to say that, but we, I know that there is there's a bias about women coming forward and explaining pain, especially when it's around the period and, and it's ex accepted as something that's normal and something that we should be going through. Mm -hmm. So I think that that was one caveat of it was that, you know, it was like, oh, it's normal. But then the other was that my tests kept back coming back normal. So I was almost being treated by my tests and not so much by my symptoms. Oh, wow. Mm, wow. So it, this is insane because after your endometriosis diagnosis, you started having issues with your heart. So what was your experience like with doctors this time around? So it was about a three year gap from my endometriosis diagnosis to my heart issues. So I almost had become like an expert advocate at that point. So that diagnosis was easier for me to navigate in that I knew when to move on. Um, I didn't Stay seeing the same doctor that was telling me that they didn't believe me or nothing was wrong. I moved on a lot more quickly. Um, and so I was able to get care within nine months, which is still pretty long. But I think that I was just a lot more um, equipped to ask the right questions and to know when someone really didn't believe me. What a crazy story. You obviously had a long, hard battle with your physical health, which we just saw. But how do these experiences with health care affect your mental health? I honestly don't think that I will ever go into a doctor's appointment the same way that I did before I, you know, got all these chronic illnesses. I'm so anxious for every appointment. Um, and it could just be a follow up with a doctor that I only see once a year where they're basically just telling me everything looks good, but I'm always anticipating that I'm going to have to fight or explain or that someone's not going to believe what I'm telling them is happening in my body. I just, I can't imagine. So after everything that you've been through, what do you think is the most important thing for others to do before going to an appointment? I think being a, a reliable historian of what's going on in your body is so important. And what I mean mm. by that is having like detailed, specific information as to what you're feeling, not just I'm always tired, but oh, exercise makes me more tired or mm -hmm. walking up the stairs makes me more tired or this food gives, makes my symptoms worse. But be, so being very specific about what the pattern of your symptoms look like, I think helps uh, healthcare providers just get a, a fuller picture of what could be going on with you. Because when you're vague, 
it's kind of tough to pinpoint what, you know, what direction to even go in. And I also think it makes it, it prove that like, you are on top of this. Like, no, I know my body well, and I didn't have this type of fatigue before, but now for these many months I'm having it. So I think just the, the more that you can go in and sound very certain and sure about what you're feeling, the better outcome. Uh, vital advice I see even in your uh, book, and we're gonna get your book, just all the journaling that you encourage the reader to do. Um, so you are a primary care nurse, which I love. Have you helped patients that are going through a similar situation to you? Yes, um, so as a primary care nurse, you know, we see patients across the whole spectrum of different symptoms and diagnoses. And if I'm in a, a patient's chart and I see that they're complaining about symptoms very similar to what I have, I'll go ahead and message their doctor and say, hey, are you thinking about endometriosis? Like that, mm -hmm. to me, the least that I can do is to get them on that, that path a lot faster than than I got on it. Mm -hmm. Good for you. I, I, thank you so much. That means so much to patients. I've had situations where someone has been through what I'm going through in the room and it changes the, the outlook of everything. So you are so vital having the, both sides of the information and making us as patients feel like everything's going to be okay. Thank you. What I gift. have to say it was actually a nurse that I met during my struggle that encouraged me in the same way to keep advocating, keep fighting and mm. it changed everything for me. So wow. I just want to pay it forward the way that she did for me. Nurses Beautiful. are angels oh, on earth. Angels, angels on earth. Angels. Angels. Nurses. Jenna, yeah. oh thank gosh. you so much for sharing your incredible story with us. In fact, DBL Nation, be sure to pick up a copy of Jenna's book, Part of You, Not All of You. We'll be right back. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you. Mm -hmm.